Hey guys, Maritza here. I wanted to make a video to break down some of um, my beliefs and why I say what I say about certain things um, so that people could have a clear understanding. You know, I'm, I'm not being a quote unquote hater or a transphobe, which are usually key words when people don't want to hear negatives about the lifestyle that they're living or their way of dealing with life or how they present to the world or what they are, their choices, you know, whatever it is, you know, um, it's nobody wants to hear anything different, you know, than what they want to hear. And, and that's understandable. You know, we all have a little world that we live in and some individuals get hurt, you know, they wear their feelings in their sleeve, they get very defensive and they right away want to go on the attack. And we all do that. I've done that. We all do that. I mean, it's, it's human nature. Now, what we have to understand that each and every one of us has an opinion about something or has a belief about something. And we, we hold on very tight to that belief, you know, and if somebody kind of questions that we get upset and our feathers get ruffled and, and all that stuff. Now, as you all know, and I've mentioned this probably a thousand times, you know, um, I've been part of the LGBT for 40 years. My first experience with uh, a person of my same gender happened when I was around 13 years old. Um, and then I continued the experimentation throughout high school. Although back then you had to be very hush hush because it was not as accepted and as cool as it is today. Back then you were, if anybody suspected that you were a lesbian and wasn't gonna go very good for you, they would make fun of you. You could even get hurt because some people were really um, offended by that, you know, of somebody being different than them or, you know, whatever. I mean, but things are way better this day and age for you guys, you know? So my opinion to why I became attracted to individuals of my same gender and the more I reflect and the more I, I look back through the timeline and how I went from relationship to relationship, which is very common, um, I've interviewed a slew of people and it's pretty much been that same pattern. You, you might find some individuals that might connect in a long-term relationship, but it's usually when they're older and tired and they get lucky enough to find someone they could grow old with. But even then that's very rare, you know? Um, but I, I went in search of that nurturing mother affection that I never got before. And plus, when I was younger, you all know this, those have been following me, I was um, molested from a very young age and I was input in my head, you know, that I should try this with my friends. You know, things that he was doing to me that I should try with my friends. So that planted a seed and, and that's all it takes. It's a seed being planted an initial suggestion. Um, when we're young, we're very impressionable, you know? So I followed through and I didn't have a total aversion towards men, although I did because I feared them per se. And I just felt safer around female because I noticed that every time, you know, I would like take a liking for a guy, all they wanted to do was get involved in the hanky panky and the eyes automatically went to places that made me feel very uncomfortable. Now, what's the number one thing with a lot of um, younger women who think that they should transition because they think they're born in the wrong body is that they don't like to be objectified. So what do they want removed? The source of objectification. That makes a lot of sense. They could have been molested as well or being objectified. I mean, there's many reasons that a girl would want to be a boy, you know, they think, well, being a man is a lot easier than being a girl, you know, and, and so forth and so on. So I don't understand why people get so upset when you try to break down the reasons, because frankly, if we could be real with one another, who would want this kind of life? 
unless there is some sort of hiccup in the developmental stages in your life, something happened to derail you from the normal path. And we have to agree there is a normal path. The norm is not being attracted to the same gender or thinking you're born in the wrong body. That's not normal. And that's not me just saying that, you know? I mean, I feel it's not normal. Other people feel it's not normal. I think the larger consensus is that it's not normal. And you say, well, what's normal? Well, there is a normal. It's like there's a default system. It's like your your computer comes with a factory default. You know, we all, there's, there's like everything in life, everything in nature has that. So when we start experimenting in life and trying to figure out who we like, what we like to do. Do we have an aversion towards a specific body part of an individual? Now you think about it, what makes a man and a woman? Their genitals. I mean, that that's like, we know what a man looks like when we look down below, we know what a woman looks like by what they grow up here and the lack of the external protrusion thing, right? It's they have an innie, males have an outie, right? So that that is the the black and white of what makes a man and a woman. So what what is it that makes people think? Okay, I don't like that that, but I like that. You know, nine times out of ten, very few people have tried the thing that they say they don't like or they had a bad experience. That's like saying you, you taste somebody's um, pudding and and they didn't put enough sugar or they just didn't. They use bad milk and it just didn't come out good and you tasted it and you're you're off of pudding for the rest of your life. When you only taste that one pudding, you're gonna make that assumption for the that you don't like pudding? Well, what about if somebody else makes it and they make it really good and you taste it and it's like yum, right? And I know that's like pretty much when we get stuck on one behavior, we get stuck on, okay, I don't like that, so I like this, and then we continue on that path. But what we don't realize is like, okay, we have not given the other gender, the opposite gender enough opportunity to understand that there might be a guy out there that makes you happy. I know that that was my situation, right? Um, pretty much none of the individuals that I was with really, you know, made me feel to the point like, hey, I don't necessarily really like to be with women and dudes are okay. And that thing down there, it ain't gonna bite me like I thought it was, you know? So now one of the things that I constantly talk about as far as being transgender and one of the reasons that I couldn't fit it in my analytical mind was the fact of functionality. People take offense when I say that. When I mean there's no functionality is that everything in life has a function to it. Men have a function in what they do. They're fathers, um, they're protectors. They're strong, most of them, you know, and that's like the, the generalized stuff. They, they have specific functions. It's like in a, an ant colony or in a bee colony, you've got the worker bees and you've got, you know, everyone has a function. In nature, everything has a function. That's not trying to be critical. That's just what it is, functionality. So I didn't feel like I had a functionality wanting to be the opposite gender that I was born as. And, and like you could play pretend for a little while and, and kind of like try to force that functionality, but it's forced because you have to do everything humanly possible to change the way you look, you know, to change everything about you. So it's it's not functional, it's, it's forced. You're forcing it, it doesn't come natural. You have to be on years and years of, of chemical treatments to try to alter your body to mimic what you think you're trying to become. But in the root of it all, you really don't change the trueness of who you are. It's cosmetic and hormones are powerful, especially, especially androgenic hormones. They're pretty powerful. 
So you don't see a lot of changes from an MTF as you do with an FTM because androgen is a very powerful hormone and it really alters a whole slew of things, you know? So if it's such a powerful hormone, then how difficult is it for an MTF to actually fully get that change that they want? They have to do things to themselves like surgeries and, you know, just a slew of different things because there's certain characteristics that you can't just wish away. You know, you either have to get an FFS, you know, um, there's just a slew of stuff. So that is being forced. It's not part of the functionality. We are built a certain way due to that functionality. Is that being hateful, what I'm saying? I mean, I'm just being truthful. Why is it that this day and age, people can't handle the truth? I don't understand. I don't understand why they get so upset and so bent out of shape and trying to like, when somebody is telling you something, they're telling you something not to be mean, but to be truthful and real so that, you know, gosh, I don't know about you, but I want the truth. I want people to be truthful with me. I don't want people to lie to me just to make me feel good. Tell me everything I want to hear. You know, in a relationship, you don't just tell your husband or your wife everything they want to hear. You want to be truthful. True friends don't lie. They tell you the truth. And I sometimes the truth hurts. But it's a truth and it will set you free. Because here you are being like all protected around your friends and people that don't want to hurt you. But when you get out in the real world or when somebody misgenders you or when somebody tells you something out of their heart, you get all butt hurt. And then that person's the most terrible thing. Oh, they've totally traumatized me because they told me this, that, and the other, and that, you know, no, I'm person, personally, I'm truthful and I'm going to tell you the truth. Like I would expect you to tell me the truth. Because that's what real friends do. That's what people that love one another do. They tell each other the truth. It may not sound like sweet whispering in the ear, like when somebody's trying to get in your, you know what, and they're trying to like win you over and they're trying to, you know, make you feel all sorts of stuff. But that doesn't last. That happens in every new relationship. But the thing is, people forget, you know, that every new relationship that new broom sweeps so well, but after that broom has been used for years and years, those bristles don't sweep as well. So see, that's the problem when people are chasing the butterflies in their stomach and wanting to hear the most beautiful things coming out of people's mouth, that when things change in life becomes real. And if you can't deal with truth, then you're going to go from relationship to relationship. You only want to hear the sweet little nothings that that new relationship wants to tell you. I think it's this generation, you know, um, I don't know, I don't know what the generation X or whatever, it, you know, it's, they just don't, they can't handle things. Everything is, they wear their feelings in their sleeve. They become very defensive. You know, they want to blame everybody else for their demise. It's never their fault. It's always somebody else. Somebody else made me feel this way. No one, and I'm going to repeat this, no one can make you feel anything unless you grant them that ability. If you give your power away to somebody else, then they're going to make you feel all sorts of stuff. But no one can make you feel anything because it's your thoughts your own emotions that you are processing. If you don't give people that power, those words can't do absolutely nothing to you. It's, it's a matter of maturity. It's a matter of understanding that sometimes we're going to hear things that will harm us or we still think it's harming us. But we have to be adult enough to understand that. I made an appointment. The earliest it could get me in was uh, June 8th. That's going to be really rough. It's only May 28th. So, 
and this month has 31 days, so we're looking at another 10 days. And that thing is so, it's, it's exposed. It's not killer, but like when wind gets in there, it kind of, kind of like smarts a little bit. So yeah, I mean, we have to try to understand that if you're part of the LGBT and you remotely choose that life, because it is a choice, there has been studies and studies and studies that they have not come up with anything to prove that you're born that way. There is absolutely no proof of that. So you, through your environment, through your traumas, through your navigation, through whatever it is, you choose to live that way. I personally have no desire, and I'm being dead honest here, to be with another woman. It just, I mean, I those desires left me a long time ago when I started dating trans women. Um, so I always forget to turn this thing off, and then sometimes I get a an email that goes bing. Um, no desire whatsoever to engage in same biological relationships, none whatsoever. Um, it's a matter of fact, it kind of like, for me, it's it's like a turnoff now. You know, I, I can see myself very easily being with a man, having a relationship, you know, I don't know about remarriage, but I know that I have to um, I know there's like such a thing as common marriage that you don't have to go and do it in front of, you know, the judge. It could be just, you know, between God, your your new husband and you. Because um, all this paperwork and it's just so crazy. And then it takes forever to, I mean, I don't know what's taking so long, but my divorce is still not, I don't know. I'm like, okay, in the day now, like, when, what's going on? Why is it taking so long? We have no children, we have nothing, let's just bada bing bada bang, you know, get it over with. You go live your life, I go live mine, you know. I um I I had the phone interview today and that went well. So now next step is I get called in for a personal interview. And we'll see how that pans out. You know, I'm like I hope I don't have to explain anything, you know, detransitioning and and all that jazz, you know, because I do a background check and obviously I've had Mark Angel come in and says, so they're going to probably know something or they'll think I'm trans or I don't know what the heck they'll think. But that's always a very uncomfortable thing to deal with when you're dealing with these gender things, you know. Um, but... It is what it is. So depending on all of that, you know, I don't know. Um, the guy I spoke with on the phone today says it'll probably be five days to contact me and, and schedule, you know, an in-person interview. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm excited because, first of all, I, I want to be able to save some money, pay off some of my credit cards because I've been an I'm unemployed, um, you know, I've had to put stuff on credit cards and, and try to, you know, deal with living. I mean, it doesn't fall off a tree, you know, it should be a money tree where you can go and, you know, but there isn't. So hopefully I, I do get that employment and then um, take it from there. I think I will buy a car. I think I will buy a Prius once I get that employment. Um, just because it's, it's going to be so hot and having to walk to work, I'll get to work drenched. Um, and that's not going to be fun. Um, or biking in or whatever. Um, so that's a waiting game now as everything in life is. But I hope that I'm, I'm making myself clear here. It's like... People get so upset when you don't agree with them, when you say something totally different than what they want to hear and they automatically think it's hate. It's like, no, these are my opinions. I mean, I personally don't believe that 
you know, same biological relationships work very well. I'm going to link two really good videos on the description area. If you guys are interested in watching, it really explains a lot of stuff. There's a reason behind why they were supposed to be a man and a woman in a relationship. There's a reason why when you're born a certain way, you're not supposed to mess with yourself. You know, we do all sorts of things. And again, everyone's entitled to do whatever it is that they want. It's your life. But I'm also entitled to speak my mind. You know, I know that transitioners wish we detransitioners would just be quiet. Like somebody wrote some comment today on one of my videos. I mean, I get all sorts of comments. It's just, you know, I'm used to them by now. I mean, it's to the point they don't really bother me. So the person goes, the voices of people who detransition are often unfairly silenced and people who realize that gender transition wasn't right for them deserve to be able to tell their story. Now there's a but. At the same time, detransitioning is not a free pass to be transphobic or spread the message that nobody should ever transition. Gender transition is right for some people and not for others. Really, and so who, who would determine who is right for and who isn't it right for, right? We should have respect for each other and our varied experience. We should have respect for everyone, yes. But um, gender transition is not a varied experience. I mean, that's like a a really dramatic thing to do to your life and to your person and, and, and to other people who who are involved in your life. So I responded, what exactly is transphobic? I mean, it's like words that are used to intimidate, to try to create shame and fear of people speaking. People's like, oh, what? I don't want to be transphobic. No, this world is thrown around to try. What is transphobic? This word is thrown around to try to suppress people's ability to express what they feel about a topic and be shamed for it. And basically, you know, that's all you're trying to do is shame somebody. It's like, Shh, don't you dare, you know? So you're putting boundaries on what people could say and labeling it bad if they say things that you don't agree with. I personally don't believe that transition is right for anyone. This is my personal belief. I don't think it's right for anybody. I mean, it's like there's no objective testing and there's no, the, the, the actual Research proves that it doesn't even relieve dysphoria, right? So I think I also mentioned that here. Um, I feel that it's not a right solution seeing what it all entails. The destruction of one's body and the use of dangerous chemicals, which doesn't change who you are really. It's just a cosmetic procedure because it doesn't change who you are. I've made the example, you could paint a car outside, but if you don't change the engine and it's all rusty, then it's still a rusty, broken down car just because it has a brand new paint job. Um, I don't believe that disagreeing with the fact that people should transition is transphobic. That's just my opinion. And an opinion of somebody who lived as a trans guy for 17 years. Not just two years, not just five years, not just 10 years, 17 years. That's a long time. And I, you know, th that's a fact. All the research that has been done states that transitioning does not relieve gender dysphoria. So it is a useless thing to do in my, in my opinion. You know, I mean, it's, and it's since I've been interviewing trans people. I think um, since 2012 from all over the world and I've done a ton of research. I don't find transitioning to be a good choice, but that's my opinion, you know, and as a person who transitioned back in 2003 before this thing was the bomb, the thing to do, everybody wants to do it. You know, I paved the way for a lot of you to transition by the education that I did and the seminars and appearing in talk shows and made it seem more like a household name. Lucky me, I didn't realize how it was gonna end up being this way. I should have the right to voice my opinion about it. Sorry that you don't like it. I'm not trying to be rude, mean, foam, hating or anything of that nature. That's just my opinion. You know, it's like people should be allowed to have opinions. 
We should agree to disagree. There's no need for name calling, no need for intimidation, no need for shaming, no need to put the violin of life forever and ever and keep talking about me, how terrible of a person I was because I didn't see you or I didn't let you do this, that, and the other, and blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's like, when is it going to end? When? When? No one put any one weapon in anybody's head telling them, you know, it's like people make choices. You're with somebody because you want to be, because you love them. You know, I, you know, it wasn't hunky-dory for me those six years and I stuck around because of love. But I can't blame anyone but myself for sticking around and hoping that maybe, you know, there's some healing to be done. And for a person not to really take responsibility to know that they do have problems, they want to blame the other person because they can't really see their own issues. That is like sweeping stuff under the rug, you know, but that's okay. You know, it is what it is. Anyway, that's it. That's all I'm going to do for, for now. It's been 26 minutes. I, uh, I might make a music video later. Let's see. All right, guys. Catch you later. Have a great weekend. Great Friday. I love you, but remember to always love yourselves too.